Блять, сука, ебаный. Окей, so you wanna do cloth in Source 2, right? Let me explain how to do this shit to you in like 4K resolution detail or whatever. This is in 4K, but this will have to do because this is probably the only video that is explaining cloth on the entire internet until somebody else comes along and decides to throw this under the bus and make a better one. Anywho, there's two ways of doing cloth in Source 2, and the second method is because CS2 is now out, so the workshop tools are available for everybody to use and get their crummy fingers on, which I've been doing for the past two days or so, trying to figure out how to get cloth to work. So one way of doing cloth in Source 2 is weight painting it off a of proxy mesh onto the main mesh, which is pretty much the primary way of doing it since Half-Life Alex, at least. Now, CS2 has added a new method called cloth chains. Now, cloth chains work differently from you know, weight painting it onto the mesh. What this essentially does, it takes a root of a chain and adds cloth nodes along it. So what you're essentially doing is that if you have a model or a mesh, at least like this one, where the hierarchy supports and has bones that are separately built for cloth in like a chain or whatnot, like this, you can essentially use this system to your advantage. Now, how do I add cloth chains to this, you're probably asking. Well, that's simple. Because I'm doing this all in a prefab, and I would recommend you do that as well once you're done with it, what you essentially just need to do is right-click, or anywhere for that matter, you need to right-click here, or you need to go here from add, and then you need to add cloth chain. Now, when you add a cloth chain, it'll show you the entire hierarchy of the skeleton. It'll show you every single bone. And this is where you need to use your own intuition a little, and you need to check what the bone names are for the cloth. I know what mine are, JKS and OS, so that's what I'm looking for. These, essentially. Now, this is for the left one, so I'll use this chain here for the left side of the coat to demonstrate. So the moment I click on this and accept it, you can see it creates a chain that essentially forces all the vertices to its side. But there is a problem. When I compile this, oh boy, does it print a lot of errors. Normally this happens when your ropes are misaligned with the chains, meaning they are, they are in a line, but each bone is twisted in a different direction. Now to fix this, if you want to fix this, all you have to do is click on this gear icon up here, on, make sure your cloth chain is highlighted in the asset viewer here, what you need to then do is scroll down and find twist relax and you need to set this to one this is a normal value so you either set it to zero or you set it to one so when you do this all of our errors go away now what i'm going to do is i'm going to disable these first two bones so i can give you a good idea of how the cloth looks you can see here it's functioning very similar to the vertex painted cloth but the thing here is we're using the bo the model's own bones that are meant for this cloth to be used now there comes the fun part, adjusting these so that they work properly. If you can notice, there's not, even though there is a chain of cloth created here, there aren't any cloth nodes on this. Well, you'd be wrong, actually. There are cloth nodes on here, but they're hidden. You can't see them here. However, if I go here and find the chain that actually made this, if I explode this, you can see it creates, it actually creates nodes. It creates cloth nodes and springs for each of these. So if I just control Z this back real quick, unexplode that cloth. This creates cloth nodes, but where's the cloth balls, you might be asking? Even though, even though I have simulated cloth enabled, I can't see them. Well, that's because you need to set a radius for them. You haven't set a radii for each of them to use single-handedly. So to do that, you need to go here and set this collision radius to something you want to use. Now, normally what I do is I set this to a value as high as 2, and then I keep lowering it from there and adjusting it and fine-tuning it. Now you can see it shows up. Now you can see it shows up. So if I compile this, and if I enable each of these, you can see each of them do in fact have a cloth node. But that is what you shouldn't do. You should never enable the first one. Never enable the first one, because Source 2 is actually smart enough to disable the very first bone, because if you enable it, it does this. Yeah, that ain't fun for anybody doing that sort of thing. Now, you might be asking how it's flowing to the side. Well, if you have a good eye viewer, you would have noticed that I have something for collisions over here. Yes, you can add collisions. These are what you use to basically dictate what 
the nodes collide with. Now they won't collide with the mesh but they will collide with these capsules. So now if I reduce the radius of this thing a little bit, where's the collision radius, if I reduce this to say 1.2, now you notice it's much more faint, it's much more easy to work with. And if I adjust some of these, if I adjust just some of these for a little bit, let's say I want to move this to a little bit here, and I want to move this a little bit backwards, so, yeah, essentially this. But this isn't, this isn't proper, but this is what you'll have to work with. Now, anyways, if I disable, you might have noticed why I disable these first three, and I always recommend that when you're doing stuff like this, for models that have, like, an uh, entire chain going down the side, you need to make sure you exclude the first three nodes so that it makes it easier for you to adjust later. Now, I'll get to the part of showing you how to adjust these to work properly because this may be working cloth, but there is still a problem with this. What happens when I animate the model? You can see it spasms out. It spasms out, and that's because it doesn't have set proper weight across the chain. With normal weight painted cloth, you couldn't normally do this. You had to go in and change every node's individual goal strength to be able to get a very, very damp effect, or you could just increase the dampening. But I'll show you how to do this with chains because chains require a little more work, you could say. Now, with chains, what you need to do is that we have something for cloth nodes called a goal strength. Essentially, a goal strength dictates how much the bone will gravitate or pull towards the original position that is being animated. A goal for a bone is basically the animated arc that it goes on. So if you set this high to like a value like one, it will immediately fling to that and it will keep following one for one. But if you set it to something in between like 0 0.5, it will stray around that animation but it will follow the same straight path. Now, how does this work in with chains? With chains, what you need to do is that you need to calculate with your own mind, looking at the chain itself, what the hierarchy of the strength will be going down the chain. So normally what I do is I start, if I have 9 bones, I start at 0 0.9. If I have something like 10 bones, which is 0 to 9, then I start with a value of 1. Because this, is, this starts from 1, that means I'll we, I will use something like 0 0.8. And this is for your own understanding. Normally, the first three bones are disabled, but this helps to know where you're going. So if I set this to 6, and another thing I'll also teach you is that one thing you should be careful of is not going below a goal strength of 0 0.4, because as you saw, if you go below a goal strength of 0 0.4 for chains, it will cause the cloth to spasm out just like that. So if I adjust this now, and if I compile, and now if I do a walking animation or a neutral run, you can see it's not spasming out and it's actually functioning like cloth is supposed to. Now mind you, I haven't animated the other ones, I've just done a single chain of cloth, but you can see it's springing back and forth like cloth is supposed to. Now normally what you do is you'd set up collisions for yourself, but I've already done that. And I'll get into setting up collisions as well. What you essentially need to do is set up a collision box or a collision capsule that is along the length of these, that is at least along the length of the collision you're going to make them. So let's say I want to do a collision on the leg. So what I do is I go here, add a cloth capsule. Not that capsule, cloth shape capsule, and I'll select the bone I want to do it on. So because I've already done the first one, I'll show you how to do the second one. So if I go here, this will go to his right knee, and this will append a bone here. But I actually wanted to do the left one, but I didn't see that. So now it's on the left one. So because it's on the left one, now I'll show you what exactly you need to do. What you need to do is you need to set each of these. You need to set the first two values to something like zero. And then you need to set the first two points apart from one another. So usually 0 to 20. So this usually works just fine. Or if you're feeling really menacing and you want to do it like in order, you can do it like this. So point 0, middle point, mean, and then point 1. This is essentially all you have to do. And the cloth will identify these collisions mostly by itself because like I said these are cloth nodes they're just bound by a chain to a specific anim path 
And yeah, that's pretty much how you do cloth chains in Source 2. If this video gets enough traction, I might as well just do the mesh painting one as well because there isn't a video on that either. But for now, this is what you get. Anywho, see y'all later. You bust my rot,